All right, so we just got down from the tree looking for uh, any signs of civilization, any lights, any roads, any people, any other hunters, and uh, sycamore. And you'll see in that video what that's all about. But we did find some sycamore, and well, we headed towards sycamore because we know sycamores, water, yeah. yeah, sycamore and water yeah. hand in hand. So we, we know we couldn't affect self rescue. We already made that decision. Um, mm -hmm. We couldn't get our bearings, but we did find the sycamores and that led us to a water source. So we got to the water source knowing that we still don't really have our bearings. Uh, so now we have to really assess our gear. Right. So that's what we're going to do now. We uh, basically emptied our pockets. Not basically, we emptied our pockets, top and bottom, in and out. And uh, now we're going to go over what we have, what uses they have, and how it's going to help our situation. And we're going to show you what that's like and hopefully give you some new ideas on uses for different items. Um, yeah, so we'll go over some of the more basic items. And again, we're just uh, two guys, you know, we're not prepped. We're just out here hunting and we got lost. That's the first thing, the basic things we have. Got a full tank knife. Dave's got a folding knife, pros and cons. This is high visibility. It's a knife. Make weapons, cordage, tools, bushcraft, all sorts of common stuff. But we want to cover, uh, just a few basic things that you may, may not have thought of. So all, everything here has, you know, at least at least two options of use. And we're gonna go over that. And also I wanna remind you guys, the scenario is it's 6.30 at night. It's getting pretty close to a complete sunset. It's getting dark. So this is kind of a, a hasty review of what we have with us. Um, so yeah, uh, keys. I got some uh, little metal things here, fish hooks, snares. Lures, maybe a spear point. Yeah, we got uh, dip cans. We use Dave's. You know, the cardboard on the back of here can be used. You can, you know, uh, scuff that enough to get a little tinder bundle. Wax on the inside. Wax. Signaling. Right. We can use the container for, uh, you know, mine's, you know, fully waterproof. Use it for collecting grubs or dry tinder. Use this for signaling if, if needed. That one's a lot harder, but it works. There you go. If needed, a little brighter. Uh, cell phone. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so cell phones. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to let's see here. So when you're in a survival situation, all right. You guys saw how I used the reflective surface as a signaling device, and this thing can be seen from miles away. So that's uh, the uh, another use of the cell phone. Even if there's no battery, it's completely dead. Yeah, Show the signaling device. Surface. Um, I got a battery in here. I could potentially get a fire started with that. Uh, but if you're going to use it, you know, this is a very valuable tool. So you don't want to, you don't want to waste your battery. So every, the rule is turn your phone on five minutes every hour. Send your text. Don't call. Send a text. And when you turn your phone off, any texts that are incoming, they'll sit there and they'll keep trying to send it until your phone comes back on and you're saving battery power. So the general rule, got a cell phone, send a text for help, location, whatever, and then turn your phone on every five, five minutes every hour to conserve battery power. And something you're gonna hear us talk about a lot is uh, ground spore and aerial spore. Spore is like man tracking, search and rescue lingo for uh, evidence, signs that you've been there. So if I were to get my, my hunting license and just leave it on the ground, maybe put a, a rock over it, so it doesn't blow away. Search and rescue can come look at that. Hey, it's fresh. Look, oh, that's Will White. That's our guys. These people are still alive. They're still alive. And again, that, that's a sign of spore, even leaving a bullet. It's just leaving like footprints with your items. Pocket full of change, right? You ain't gonna be able to buy you a candy bar. If I make an arrow somewhere showing my direction of travel. Gosh, I've made an arrow to show my direction of travel. How can I approve upon that, you say? Well, I got some change in my pocket. Somebody, that's gonna stand out a lot more than just that arrow. Uh, I put that quarter down, or I put that bright penny down. It's gonna draw attention to that arrow. Uh, and again, this is more spore, all right? That quarter, quarters don't grow on trees. Me and Will put that quarter there. Yeah, and the brain, human brains naturally pick up, oh, money. Our brain just naturally kind of looks looks towards it. Uh, I got my wristwatch, got a battery in here, 
Uh, maybe able to use that for fire, not sure. It's got a built-in compass, but without even knowing where we are, it's not really all that useful. Now, if I had a snake bite on my wrist, I could use this as like a, a mild tourniquet. You don't want it, by the way, snake bites, hospital. End of story. You don't need to suck the poison. Don't cut it to, you know, let the poison leak out. The only thing you really can do, get to a hospital and maybe put on some sort of mild tourniquet just to kind of just a little snug, just to slow the flow of the toxins or the venom. Um, yeah, so just two regular hunters. I got my little uh, iced coffee mocha that I brought in. Um, this has a lot of uses. You know, I can break the glass, make arrowheads, make a cutting tool. But one of the things that you got to do is you have to assess the value. This is much more valuable as a container than it is making arrowheads. Um, but as Will was talking about a second ago, talking about spore, right? There's no reason for me to keep this on here, okay? SAR personnel are taught how to assess the age of something. How long has that soda can been sitting here? Is that soda can four months old? Or is that soda can three days old? I'm gonna leave that, and that's just more spore for search and rescue. Uh, you wanna cover some other stuff with that? Will? Yeah, uh, water purification. Another thing, you know, we container. Water. We find a spring head, we can just drink straight from there. If we need to purify water, it's a lot easier to boil in a glass bottle than it is plastic. It tastes a lot better and it's more healthy. Even though in this situation, health is my last concern, it is a positive. And, you know, if for some reason, you know, we've been yelling and screaming for search and rescue for a couple days. This is a very lazy, just I can just drop my knife. And that's not something, that's not a sound you're going to mistake in mother nature that's not a natural sound yeah nothing in mother nature makes that sound uh ammo right me and will are out here hunting he's got the rifle i got my wheel gun so just so you guys this is just to get your wheels turning uh everything has a use everything is a resource so i take this off okay i take the projectile off i can use that as a spore i can put that bullet down and they'll see that that's a spore all right, so I take the gunpowder out. You guys have seen the, uh, the video with the magnifying glass gunpowder. We have a rifle scope here. We can use that with the gunpowder. After that, don't just throw this away just because you've gotten the, the gunpowder out of it. I'm going to put it back in my wheel gun or my rifle, right? It's, that primer is still going to make a loud, audible crack. All right, so even though I get the gunpowder out of it, it still has uses. And then if I do use it for signaling, I still have the casing, which I can use for spore. So what Dave's talking about, if you're not familiar with ammunition, this is your primer. So once you're firing pin, once you pull the trigger, it hits this, makes a little spark, all the gunpowder explodes. So once you get the gunpowder out, you still do have this primer to uh, use for signaling and actually but we can actually make fire with that if we need to. Yeah, if you get something, if you get a tinder that's sensitive enough. Right. Uh, I've done it with pure cotton, 22 primer. There was enough fire coming out of that primer to ignite the cotton. Right, but the problem is, you know, finding uh, a delicate enough tinder in nature is, is gonna be, it's possible, but it's tough. If you have a pair of, you know, uh, cotton gloves, you can easily go inside, you know, peel some of this out, and use that as your tinder. That I believe would take a spark from the, uh, from the primer. Got my gator neck. Use this for uh, either a container. I can tie a knot in one end and I'll fill it up with whatever. Use it for uh, water filtration. And I'll put this over your cup, pour the water through here. Let it filter out a lot of the larger stuff. I can cut this into strips and get quite a decent amount of cordage out of just one, one gator neck. I got this uh, pocket lint, right, which is mostly cotton. I can just fluff that up and that will take a spark. Laces. Now, we're, we're approaching this scenario as, you know, we're not preppers, we're not survivalists, you know, but I have boot laces. Uh, socks, you can use socks as a, you know, build a three-tier water filtration system. Uh, coarse gravel, sand, charcoal, sand, uh, and a rudimentary filtration system. Uh, the magazine I have, taking it apart, and I'll be honest, not everything you have on your person is going to offer an idea immediately. So at the moment, right now, I'm having a little trouble figuring out how this can be useful. Doesn't mean it's not. 
It just means I haven't thought of it yet. So this is still valuable. I just don't know its value yet. There's your uh, lip balm, right? Uh, other than its intended use, uh, waterproofing, uh, fire, uh, use it as an accelerant, um, a lubricant. Lubricant, you got a little cut you want to keep clean. It's kind of like uh, it's Vaseline or Neosporin. It'll, it'll help keep it sealed. A lot of stuff in your wallet. Uh, we're going through Will's wallet. I'm not going to go through mine. But a lot of the stuff in your wallet <clears throat> will have a very reflective... There we go. Right there. Uh, very reflective value. Um, so start with your stuff that is not as reflective. I can cut that in half. This is spore. All right. I can take all this stuff, cut it in half, and leave it. Search and rescue is going to find it. And that's spore. These guys are still alive. These guys are heading in a certain direction, and they're trying to affect self-rescue. You got tons of spore in your wallet, whether you know it or not. Um, we got our rifle here. Uh, we got the scope. Uh, we have multiple magnifying. If you're going to go ahead and destroy your scope to get a fire started, go ahead and leave the rest of this stuff as spore. All right. I was thinking the right. same thing. We could just easily take these these caps off. These cost less than a dollar to replace. They know we're hunting. There's another piece of spore. You just leave that on the ground, clear a little spot on the ground, put it in the center of that clearing. Yeah, get the stuff, get the glasses out of here. That's going to get you a fire. And then the rest, bust it up and leave it as spore. And those are just a few basic basic uses for some of these items. We're not going to go over every single possible use. That would take quite, quite a long time. So this is just kind of a basic introduction, basic understanding to state that, you know, a glove, like, oh, it keeps my hands warm. This has so many more uses, just like everything you've already seen. It's not just, it doesn't have just its intended use. If you're creative, you can uh, create something that can help save your life. And that's a, the big takeaway is thinking outside the box, you know, uh, and a big part of that is, you know, just the spore. Um, that's, leaving spore is probably going to do more for you uh, than a lot of the, even the uh, intended uses for this stuff. If somebody's looking for you, spore, 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 spore. Especially in this situation, we are way, way underprepared. We don't have, we, we have very minimal gear. You know, if we had a lighter and a compass and you know, backup phone battery and knew where we were, that'd be one story. But seeing how we have minimal gear and we're unprepared, our best bet is help search and rescue find us. That should be your objective in this situation. Can't find your way out, don't have stuff to, you know, help you last for months on end. You need to help search and rescue find you ASAP. That's your best bet. I think we did a pretty good job of assessing our gear and showing the students, uh, think outside the box, how, uh, assess your gear. What do you really have on you? Yeah, and we got tons and tons and tons of spore. So once we kind of eliminate the use or expire the use of some of these items, you know, last last thing we can do is use it for spore. Yep. Yeah, see, I'm, I got the sun here. Yeah. You don't have the sun. So, so all I'm doing is holding up basically my, my sight picture, my scope. I hear a helicopter. I hear a helicopter uh, or a plane. All I'm gonna do is basically aim at you with this V in my fingers. I'm gonna shine this light until I can see it on the tips of my fingers and know that I am hitting you with this reflection. So obviously it's only good for the daytime, but you know, maybe I can't speak, I don't have a whistle, but I see someone, you know, another hunter maybe. You hear dogs. We hear dogs, you know? Once I see human, I can start signaling them, especially if they're way too far away, you know, yelling, even if they can hear me. In the mountains out here, it's really hard to pinpoint where someone's coming from because the, all the mountains kind of throw the sound, sound waves around.